Testing. All right, guys. Let's talk about how, from a marketing perspective, Polyphia's last release has been brilliantly executed when it comes to a production, but also virality and awareness. Basically finding new listeners and, and reaching an audience. Around the time of their last album, 2018 New Levels, New Devils, their monthly listener count on Spotify was about roughly 300,000 monthly listeners per month. And this was on par with some of the bigger prog rock bands like Animals as Leaders and Periphery at the time. And fast forward to now, with the release of Playing God, they managed to increase their monthly listener count from around 300,000 in 2018 to just breaking 1 million with the release of the Playing God video and Neurotica, combination of these two videos. And they didn't stop there. After the release of Remember That You Will Die, which is the album they just released two weeks ago, they have raised that bar even further and have almost doubled from 1 million monthly listeners to 2 million monthly listeners in the course of just two to three weeks. Now, this is incredible from not only a metal band, but also a subgenre of metal, instrumental. And the secret here is really no secret. It's something that's been done in the hip hop and rap and mainstream community for years. And that's features. If you look at a mainstream hip hop or rap artist, a third of their track listing is gonna have features from other mainstream hip hop or rap artists. And what this does is essentially work as some cross promotion, basically, Everyone on the track is going to get the royalties to a certain degree, but also everyone in the tr- um, who takes part in the track is going to have some of their audience be exposed to the track that they collabed on. Now, Polyphia did a concept of this four years ago on New Levels, New Devils within the niche of shred guitarists or prog guitarists. Uh, their last album, New Levels, New Devils, featured Jason Richardson, a, a shred metal guitarist, Ichika, another guitarist, very proficient from Japan, uh, Yvette Young, and a few other acts. Sean, within the niche of talented in- uh, instrumental guitar work, that was a great move on their part. They got their cross promotion within that niche. And now on Remember That You Will Die, they've taken it to the next level. Not only worked within the niche of metal, they've moved on to more broader genres like pop, hip hop, and even metal from the 80s, uh, Steve Vai, who is a notable feature, who has essentially been the guitar innovator since the 80s. I want to just go into the the power of what these features have done for Polyphia. Now, if we look at their latest release, Remember That You Will Die, it's 12 tracks, and I believe eight of them have features. Uh, Brass tracks on Genesis, Anomaly on The Audacity, Sophia Black on ABC, Kill Station on Memento Memori, Snot on on uh, track seven, Lil West on track ten, Chino Moreno from the Deftones on track eleven, Steve I on track twelve. If we look at these one by one, brass tracks, we go to his artist profile, and Genesis is the top popular song on his profile. Anyone that is going to visit Brass Tracks as a producer or an artist, is going to see, at the very top spot, Genesis, featuring Polyphia. If they weren't Polyphia fans before, a portion of them are going to hear Genesis and be interested in Polyphia as a band. A portion of them, not everyone. But let's think about how big the exposure is for uh, for Brass Tracks. Uh, Brass Tracks is like an R&B producer. Uh, definitely not metal. And now with 764,000 monthly listeners, there's this is a whole new audience that Polyphia was not exposed to that is now essentially getting free publicity on Brass Track's profile. If we go to the next feature, Anomaly, The Audacity, which is my favorite track on the album. Anomaly is a jazz artist. And again, we see that Anomaly's top song on his profile is The Audacity featuring Polyphia. This is another instance where the 633,000 Anomaly fans are going to be exposed 
to Polyphia on their bio. Uh, a portion of them might listen to, Poly- to all the Audacity and actually like the Polyphia song and become fans of Polyphia. Very likely since Anomaly does put out instrumental work and Polyphia is predominantly an instrumental band. We have Sophia Black. This is probably the smallest feature that Polyphia has done, which is really cool that they don't feel like they're beyond working with small artists, especially if they're talented. It doesn't matter if if uh, they don't have the clout. They're still a great artist to work with uh, to change up your sound. And <clears throat> I think at the time before these 600,000 listeners that likely came from Polyphia, we had all these people that were uh, Sophia Black fans who liked the the um, kind of K-pop sound that she had. They're now exposed to Polyphia. So, you know, a little marginal exposure, but new audience, new exposure nonetheless. And again, we see ABC is the top song for Sophia. If we go to Kill Station, Kill Station has a huge audience at 1.5 million monthly listeners. In fact, if you look at the top five, most of these songs, not including Memento, Memento Mori, which is the top song on the list. If we look at this top five, he's, they've got, he's got singles that have way more plays than any Polyphia song, than the majority of Polyphia songs. So we got 40 million, 57 million. So Kill Station's a big artist, and with 1.5 million, million monthly listeners and Memento Mori on the top spot of his profile, this is a whole new audience for Polyphia to tap into. Moving on to Snot. F around and find out. It doesn't have the top spot, but Snot is a huge artist compared to Polyphia with 8 million monthly listeners. And still, the song is has managed to sit in his top 10. Now, the top 10 is not visible on mobile, but for anyone that's on desktop like I am, a portion of his fans are going to get exposed to this Polyphia track. And these fans are predominantly hip-hop and rap, so... Brand new audience for Polyphia to tap into. Still in the top 10. Super lucrative feature for them. The next one is Lil West, which is another hip-hop artist, rapper. And this was a great collab, by the way. I I really enjoyed Lil West's verse and style that fit with the end of Chimera. But as we see here, with 500,000 monthly listeners of an audience, Chimera sits at the top of his popular list which means everyone who is visiting his profile that is a fan of Lil West now gets to get a taste of Polyphia and what they're about. Chino Moreno from the Deftones. Now, this one's a little weird. I Maybe the metadata that transferred over across the platform didn't register Chino as an actual feature or something. I don't see them on here. Um, Let's skip that one for now. But let's talk about the last feature, Steve Vai. Steve I has been an influential guitarist, an innovator type guitarist since the 80s. He's, he's arguably one of the most popular guitarists, still culturally relevant today. I think his Instagram has like a million followers, which is like crazy for somebody from the Shred generation. And if we go to his profile with a mo- 1 million monthly listeners, Ego Death sits at the very top. And so this is great exposure for anyone who is into traditional metal. They're now going to be exposed to Polyphia. New exposure into uh, more old school metal. All in all, eight features and six of them sit as the top spot in each of these artists' um, profiles. What's actually brilliant about the blend of these features is they're not all just one genre. They're different genres, which is contrary to what they were doing in New Levels, New Devils. Most of their features were very talented, virtuosic guitarists, with, I believe, one feature being a a vocalist named Kuko, who is some sort of alt-pop, chill-hop type artist. Here in Remember That You Will Die, all these features span different genres from pop, hip-hop, jazz, metal, um, R&B, brilliant move. What's super great about what they're doing by collabing with this wide gamut and variety of artistry is it shows that they are versatile. 
Polyphia is versatile <clears throat> as producers, as, as an artist, and that they're willing to change their sound just enough to accommodate what the artists that they're collaborating with would like to be a part of. They've, they've changed their music in just, in, in just enough of a way where they're compatible with whoever they're collaborating with which means that they're just brilliant producers and songwriters, that they can actually change their sound, still represent their own tone, but bridge a gap with an artist like Sophia Black, who does predominantly alternative pop. I really love this. I love the example they set for what artists need to be doing in the future, which is collaborating and not being stuck in their own way of writing. Uh, Not only are we going to get a lot more exposure from this cross collaboration of each other's artists, but we're going to get to see artists such as Polyphia push their own sound and evolve in a way and try new things that they would have likely not done without the collaboration. I'm super excited for the portfolio they've built. I truly believe that this is just the beginning for them and that Several years from now, it will not be far-fetched to see an act like Ariana Grande or, or Drake feature on a Polyphia song. Polyphia may become the instrumental band of the, of the century. Who knows? At the rate that they're going, they're still young. They've still got so much time ahead of them. And they've been making the right moves since the beginning of their career. I mean, look at the the data doesn't lie, guys. Like this, in May, that's when they dropped playing God, and man, they they managed to double their volume, almost, in such a short time. Um, so, anyways, if you guys are still here, thanks for sticking around. I hope you guys learned something. If you're artists yourselves or producers, I also am an artist or a producer. Would love to collab. I love making all kinds of music, and if even if you don't want to collab with someone like me, go out and collab with someone else. Try to shoot for someone bigger for that progression or help a little guy out that just is plateaued, can use the exposure or heck, just wants to write and and try something new with their sound. You might be the person they're looking for to help push them out of a plateau or a comfort zone that they're in. Thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next video.